Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and we are coming to you from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank in beautiful Alpharetta, Georgia. I want to introduce two great guests, and I was kidding both of them before we started that they make me tired for all the, their accomplishments. Uh, I feel very inadequate, and who knows, uh, folks, maybe you'll feel the same way after listening to them, but they they are very accomplished in their respective fields. Dr. Quinn Doe with Advancing Your Reach, and Frank Parisi with Atomic Wash Design and a special 501c3 he cares about that we'll talk more about when we get to Frank. But first, let's get uh, let's go to Dr. Quinn Doe. She's with Advancing Your Reach. Dr. Doe, thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. Can I, can I call you Quinn? Yes, okay. you can call me Quinn. Terrific. Well, I, I mean, I'm married to a PhD, so I respect PhDs immensely what they have to go through. But tell everyone about you and, and Advancing Your Reach. Okay. Um, so as John has mentioned, my name is Dr. Quinn Doe, and I started Advancing Your Reach uh, with the intent to encourage professional and personal development and growth within a more holistic framework. Um, for the past 20 years or so, I have been working in the scientific and research world with many different agencies. And as a rec- nationally recognized authority and thought leader in clinical and epidemiological studies, I found one of the items that were of need was actually helping those who are in academic research become more accessible to the general public. So I help guide health researchers and practitioners on how to utilize their strengths, weaknesses, and passion to kind of intersect research and practice. And um, I've worked with many nonprofits uh, as a researcher, um, government agencies, academic medical centers, and some pharmaceutical companies. And typically what I provide um, my clients is with strategic planning, some training, and some assessments so that they're more uniquely aligned with both the demands of the healthcare industry as well as with their career goals and paths. So, uh, so Quinn, you, you really help healthcare professionals, researchers, uh, you know, folks that are in the sciences uh, in an area that they really don't think a lot about when they're coming through school and they're in their, they get in a career. They don't really think about their personal brand, how to develop themselves, their trajectory for their career, et cetera, right? Yes. So the purpose of um, advancing your research reach is basically making sure that these academics know how to talk to the general public because the biggest the biggest impact they can have in their research is actually translating that research into practice mm. and being able to um, voice those opinions and statements so everybody can actually put it into practice. Sure. And one of the main issues with those that are in research is we're so used to talking to a scientific audience writing scientific articles and only speaking in scientific jargon, right. but the general public, you know, would be interested in the research too, if we could just translate it into more layman's terms so that everybody else could understand what they were talking about. Of course. And, and, and that's better for the career, right? I mean, that, yes. because you're not really taught that, I assume when you come through that, these skills and that these skills are really valuable to your ultimate career, your earning potential, et cetera. Yeah. So what we're taught in school is more of the technical skills, the scientific skills. Very little is actually explained on what soft skills are and what you can do with your degree. Because I think a lot of people, when they go through school, they think, okay, I'm on this one specific trajectory. I can't expand beyond what I'm currently doing. And they're, they limit themselves. Sure. So sure. that was one of the things that, you know, I faced too. Can doing a PhD program, for example, your expectations was to do postdoctoral research. And if you're a lab scientist, the expectations are you would go work in a lab. However, you know, you could be scientifically minded and work in the communications era, you know, news 
stations, um, TV, articles, even online blogs. You can utilize what you have learned in school and drive it towards where you want to be, whether it's communications or um, working with underprivileged kids or impacting science on a more of a community level. We're speaking with Dr. Quinn Doe, and she is with Advancing Your Reach, advancingyourreach.com. Um, uh, she's the founder of this company. And, and Quinn, I'm interested in a case study of your work. So you, uh, in fact, you were written up uh, in an article about this, about uh, your uh, mentorship of a childhood cancer survivor and her career journey. Tell us about that. Yeah. So um, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has a um, a uh, fellowship program where they link up mentors to kind of help guide PhD students. And it's supposed to help them not only shape their research and career paths, but also navigate the personal challenges that come with completing a doctoral program, you know, um, especially those are from underrepresented population and disadvantaged backgrounds. So um, Michelle and I, that's who my mentee was, uh, she and I met in 2017. That's when we were um, linked as part of the Health Policy Research Scholars Program. And one of the highlights of that uh, coaching program is that I was able to understand her as a person and walk her through the challenges she faces as a childhood cancer survivor, um, making sure that jobs were accommodating of the things that she needed, as well as trying to kind of understand like where she wanted to go. Um, a lot of people go to grad school with these expectations that this is the type of work I want to do. And this is the only type of work I want to do. Mm -hmm. um, so with my guidance, I kind of made her more comfortable and trusting. And, you know, of course, working with clients, the biggest thing is making sure that the, you're authentic and um, they trust you and providing that information with you so that you can guide them to where they need to be. Right. So she was able to get a very competitive NIH um, fellowship with my guidance and actually get all the accommodations that she needed. Mm. But one of the key things we did was um, I made sure I actively listened to her. What was she talking about? What is being said? And I made sure when I was answering her questions, I was in a, in, in a way so that we could uncover any other challenges that she wasn't readily of, uh, sharing, as well as trying to determine how she could face those challenges. Because I think one of the key things when you're trying to coach people in their career paths and get to where they need to be is you have to be authentic to who they are, what they want to do, right. how they want to make that change um, and whatever impact they want to do. That makes a lot of sense because there are a lot of folks that really kind of project themselves as opposed to, as you say, actively listen and absorb where someone else is in their journey and help them in their journey. Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, great story. And, um, so let's extend that out just a little bit and talk about some of the services that you offer, mm -hmm. uh, healthcare professionals, uh, uh, like establishing connections. Right. So one of the things I do is because I've actually been a part of, um, several different fellowships start with the Albert Schweitzer Foundation with several NIH predoctoral fellowships, as well as the health, health, Hispanic health seeking professionals um, fellowship. But with all of these different fellowships, one of the key things is trying to establish that connection. So being on the other side, being a mentee, I knew that in order for someone to trust me to guide them, we had to establish, you know, a true authentic relationship where we're actually connecting. And so what happens is when I um, meet with my clients and provide this advice, I try to determine based on what their goals and objectives are to link them up with the right appropriate people. Because sometimes you don't know who to ask for advice unless you're actually given some advice to go on, right? Yeah, for sure. Because you don't know who the experts are right. or if it's even possible unless you talk to people who are actually doing that work. And sometimes the people that sound like experts really aren't the experts, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. And, and again, we get back to the training that healthcare scientific professionals get. They don't get networking. No. Uh, training, right? No. And what I do is I give them tips to make them 
more of a extrovert versus an introvert because a lot of a lot of academics and researchers are more introverts than they are extroverts. Oh, come on. I can't believe that. <laughs> That's a shock to me. <laughs> so one of the key things I actually tell a lot of my younger mentees is um, when you go to conferences, make it a lasting conversation, make it a lasting connection. So it's easy for you to just hand somebody your resume or your card, but that doesn't guarantee a connection or a conversation. Mm. So what I've told them is, you know, you always start off with like a little story, something for them to remember you by, and then ask them for your card. Because then that makes it on you to continue that connection instead of putting the whole onus on the person you're trying to connect to. That's great advice for anyone. So I like that. That that I mean that and I'm I'm gonna use that myself. Thank you. So Authenticity. That's another important point for you. Yes. So authenticity. I think everyone's in this realm where we always show the good and not always the bad. Right. So when I'm, when some of my clients talk about the challenges they faced, whether it's learning how to communicate in a positive way, because I know, you know, when we're in these relationships and it's a stressful work environment, you might not know what the external factors are, but how you proceed to communicate with that person actually changes the entire environment, right? Because someone could be really negative to you. Maybe something's going on at home you don't know. But instead of being negative back, you can always turn it into a more positive, which I've provided some advice on that. So if something happens and someone's really negative, like, I'm sorry, you know, maybe that wasn't taken correctly. Or if it's it's a um, critique of something that you're doing, you can say, well, how could I improve that? What would, what are your suggestions on doing it? Cause then it makes a positive spin where you are asking them for advice and you're not making it into a negative conversation. And you have to be also authentic with those that you make these connections with. So when I am guiding a lot of these students and professionals, I tell them you really kind of have to make that connection so that people know who you really are. So if you face challenges, it's not hard to share what your own personal challenges are. It also makes that connection stronger sure. because you're showing them there's negative and positive things, not just negative, not just, not everything is as what it seems at all times. For sure. For sure. Great advice from Dr. Quinn Doe. Uh, she's with Advancing Your Reach. So how do you work with your clients? Uh, you, you do. I know you do training. Talk Talk a little bit about how you engage with your clients. Okay. Uh, so I've met a lot of my clients through conferences and also, um, you know, through other people and also by word of mouth. And so what happens, I'll give you an example. I've met some through conferences where they've heard me speak at a presentation and they'll reach out to me afterwards and say, well, I'm interested in doing this type of research or I'm interested in following this career path. What advice could you give? So basically what what I do is I start out with a conversation, kind of assessing what their career goals are, what their passion is. And then from there, I provide them advice and training on how to speak to others about what their mission and their goals are. And then I also provide them advice on how to improve the um, delivery of that information. Wow. Uh, a lot packed in all that uh, from uh, Dr. Quinn Doe, advancing your reach. Uh, so something tells me you're going to have, I mean, you, you've just launched your practice, but you've been doing this kind of uh, uh, really informally for a long time, which is kind of what led you to this, right? Yeah. So what had happened was, um, I guess I'll, t- I'll tell a brief story. I was destined to go to medical school. And while I was waiting for medical school, I took a uh, I took an elective class that had to do with health policy, and that person actually ended up being my mentor and changing my career trajectory altogether. Wow. Because he said, you know, like I had always thought, okay, one-on-one clinical provider, you know, a clinician providing individual care, you're affecting that person's change. But I had never even thought about the health policy or public health realm where you're making a larger change. You're still affecting individual people. For sure. But- you're making a larger change and kind of changed my whole aspect of research and how it impacts the larger population. Right. Right. And so you're passing it on. Yeah. Wow. Great work. Dr. Quindo, 
She is with Advancing Your Reach. So, uh, Quinn, for those that would like more information, uh, would like to be in touch with you, tell them how they can do that. Sure. Um, they can go to my website, which is www.advancingyourreach.com, or reach me by um, phone at 803-716-9060, or email me at um, t. Quinn, Q-U-Y-N-H dot doe at gmail.com or advancing your reach at gmail.com. Great stuff from Dr. Quinn Doe, advancing your reach. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Uh, so folks, you're more connected than ever today, whether it's your friends, your family, or your life, Renaissance understands how you bank, offering the mobile banking services that you need. Renaissance also knows that sometimes you need to speak to real people with real answers, and that's why Renaissance has more than 170 convenient locations throughout the South ready to serve you. For more information, go to RenaissanceBank.com. Renaissance Bank, understanding you, member FDIC. We turn now to Frank Parisi, and Frank is with Atomic Wash Design. Frank, welcome. Thank you for having me. It's this great. Is fantastic. It's great to have you here. And so tell everyone about yourself and Atomic Wash Design. Sure. I'll be happy to. First of all, uh, Dr. Quinn, wow. Uh, thank you for that information. That was fantastic. Really appreciate that. Um, so Atomic Wash, really a great story behind that. I've known these guys for a while. They started off, uh, oddly enough, we're all from New York City. And they are two creative guys. Um, Jamie Kasman and Chris Santa are those two creative folks that um, worked on Madison Avenue, had that big background with the big giant firms that are out there. And then they decided to get into more of the corporate world. So they ended up moving to a company called Workflow One out of Dayton, Ohio, of all places, right? So it's all oh, things wow. print. Yeah, wow, New York world. to Dayton. That, that's quite a move. If you look at the print world, everything is in Dayton, Ohio. It's kind of funny how that works. Dayton, yeah. Cleveland, you know, cut stuff, stuff in Cincinnati, Columbus, and it's really kind of cool. So they were with Workflow One. I was with Standard Register, 103-year-old publicly traded family-owned company back in the day and the Wright Brothers and all that kind of cool stuff. And, and the founders worked with the Wright Brothers, so a lot of history. And so Workflow One was coming up for sale. And our, our group, our leadership team was able to buy Workflow One. So Chris and Jamie were part of that team. So Workflow One was having some, some financial issues. And so Chris and Jamie decided to leave, come down to Atlanta, historic Norcross actually, move into a 147 year old building that's been there forever and a day. Really cool factor, right? They film a lot of movies over there and mm -hmm. they shut the place down. There's stories about that too. And they created Atomic Wash. Uh, so jump ahead a few years, and uh, John, as, as you know, I'm a part of a lot of different networking things, and I love the Atlanta Tech Village and the sure. Buckhead Club, and, and I, I love to stay connected. And it, nothing good happens staying home, watching TV, <laughs> right? Get off the couch and, and go, go do things. Nobody ever accused you of that, Frank. No, no. So I love that stuff, and my kids will tell you that too. And so what will happen is – um, I went down for an event for one of my buddies who's an international uh, retailer, and he was on a board, and he was going to present, and I was just going to support him in Buckhead at Atlanta Tech Village. And Chris and Jamie were there um, to see some different folks as well. And we just kind of looked at each other and said, you know, at the beer or wine mixer beforehand, hey, I know you. I know you. Hey, Workflow One? Yeah. And then Standard Register. And we started up the conversation like it was yesterday. It was just fantastic. And then I had been contacted by GBS about November 2017, and the CEO of that company came to me and said, Hey, it was the day after Thanksgiving. All right. You know, the marketing thing, you did that at standard register, the digital side of it, the creative side of it, the services side of it. And it, it's funny to hear these senior executives, highly educated, um, say, Hey, we've got print. We know print. We do it really well, but we don't have any sexy in our print. Mm. Right. So that's it's wow. like, what do you mean by that exactly? Well, the cool factor and how we can make it stand out. What does brand mean? What does logo mean? And all that different type of thing. And I know you, the CEO of this GBS company, and they said, hey, um, could you figure out with all your contacts down there to look for a really dynamic company? And we could figure out if the culture fits, find out if the whole thing's going to be a great mix. And it took us about a year. It's funny. It's almost the same amount of time for a $220 million workflow one to close the deal. <laughs> right. And we did that. And it was really great just getting to know each other because GBS is a, is a privately held company, 50-year-old. And they love the whole fact of culture and who we are in a family. They're an ESOP too. So when the oh, wow. chairman retired, the founder, he sold the company back to the employees. So it was very important that whoever they add, and they're in a growth mode, which is great, right? They're buying yeah. companies. 
to go ahead and make sure the culture was a true fit. So it took a year getting to know each other more than anything. And April 1st, we closed that up and Atomic Wash is now owned by GBS. And for those that don't know G- GBS, uh, uh, what does that stand for? So, so that, that's a, it's a family thing, right? Okay. It's kind of like OPEX, another company I work for. No one really knows the exact meaning of it, but <laughs> okay. it's GBS. It came back from about 50 years ago, but they are a, a global print company. Gotcha. Healthcare, okay. banking, manufacturing, you name it. They're all things print, but they didn't have a true marketing arm. They had marketing, but not something like Atomic Wash. Got it. I got it. So, uh, marketing services, mm-hmm. that's a big topic. Sure. And you talked about the print side of that, but maybe you can drill down into some other aspects of what Atomic Wash is all about. Sure. So if you go to our, our website, AtomicWash.com, you'll, you'll see, you know, we break it down in three spots and it really kind of makes it very easy. And I have this little introduction book that I like to use, but it's brand architecture. It's critical communications and then it's digital marketing, right? So I know we were talking a little bit before about the digital side because CMOs back when I was a CMO, um, you didn't have anything except for maybe a physical postcard going to somebody. And it was hard to track that unless we had somebody put it into a computer and then you'd be able to hopefully track it. And that was sure. just horrendous. The CMOs were always being changed out. They were never really driving strategy. Mm. Well, now with Atomic Wash, we're able to capture all that data, capture the analytics, whatever you want to call it, whatever the catchphrase is now, build dashboards and be able to go back to banking. Right? We're in Renaissance Bank right now. Go back to banking and say, CMOs, Here's the information of the campaigns you run, what drove those campaigns. It could be a LinkedIn marketing campaign. It could be just something that we did through email marketing. It could be anything that we want to do. Now we have Salesforce.com. We got Pardot. We got these incredible pieces. But we can not only do that for you, but we could design the messaging to make people want to open it up, read it, understand it, and then engage. Oh, wow. And so those data pieces really matter because we also know what's not working. So we could change the message and go to a new area where we know this particular campaign is fantastic. So we could do the brand architecture, the critical communications, and the digital marketing piece. And how we do that is really through the very first step is through something called a brand development blueprint. And so that's all about, we we all joke about this somewhat, but we all know it's very real. It's the culture of an organization. So when we create a brand and a logo and a website, and we have to make it engaging, we really want to make sure we understand who the leadership is and also their customers. So we'll not only interview the actual leadership team, We'll actually go out and ask to talk to the different customers that are out there. And not all of them are going to be the raving fan type customers. We want a customer or two maybe you didn't get, if that's possible. And every once in a while, we get it. Right. find out why you didn't choose that company, why you didn't do this, why you didn't do that. And we actually make a deliverable. It's multiple pages. It's all things about who you are, your culture is, and what it looks like. And then from that point, we give you that deliverable. And then we come back saying, here's why we're designing this type of logo. Here's your brand, and here's the reason why. Because so many chief executive officers and leadership teams, they have a logo and they go, yeah, it's a logo. Yeah. Right? It's, right. It's a logo. So we're actually going through that right now since we just got you know acquired by GBS. We're doing that for GBS in 2020. So we're going to do a whole brand development blueprint for them to bring them current, make everything look really engaging, the website really engaging, G- uh, gbscorp.com. Take a look at that website and then take a look at the atomicwash.com website. And we're even going to go through that ourselves and do a joint rebranding of Atomic Wash and GBS in 2020. Outstanding. Frank Parisi. Frank is with Atomic Wash Design. Now, Frank, I'm, I'm curious about something when it comes to branding. I'm interested in your view on this, given your experience and your firm's work in this. How much of branding is actual versus aspirational? Right, because right, because sometimes folks rebrand in ways they really want to be, but aren't fully there yet. Right. Well, yeah, and that that's that's we we laugh a lot about that. Right. I'll you, bet you come yeah. by Norcross. Anybody's welcome. Right. We have a lot of movie stars in there, and our Starbucks lounge we call it that show up every <laughs> once in a while to hang out. But come by any time. But we joke about that for the sheer reason of just what you said. It's funny. Um, that's what the reason for the brand development blueprint is. Sure, because um, it's it's. You know, so so many companies were made, just like Apple was, just like Google was, IBM was. All these great companies was one guy with an idea, Ford Motor Company, same thing with Henry Ford. And they created a company. And it's really just sometimes one guy or, or a spouse going, hey, that looks cool. Let's use that. Um, so it is aspirational in some points. But also, if you go to our website, we love to show off our work, right? Because we're creative services. We're not selling pens. We're not selling paper. We're selling an idea. And so we put a lot of our work out there. And it really tells a good story about 
who they are. And so no kidding, when we have those interviews, it's not just fluff. We have to really get deep. And that hurts. That's hard to get that interview with the executive team to find out who they think you are. For sure. And then what does your business development people say at a trade show? What do they say when they're actually at, at the uh, Buckhead Club down there having a conversation with a prospective client? Are they really telling the true story about who they are? GBS has that problem because we buy companies. That's what we've been doing for the past five years or so. And we're acquiring all these great companies to make the core company better. There's so many things. We have a hard time sharing the message of exactly what we do because there's so many varying parts of it. Right. So with that brand piece, we um, it's a pitch, right? It's almost like Mad Men. I call Atomic Wash, Jamie and Chris, Mad Men without ties. Because you know, Chris <laughs> has a cool beard. And he's a musician. And Jamie's a great guy. He's been in the business for years. But you've got to remember it's a pitch to someone who might think they've already got something that's really great. Right, right. Uh, so talk a little bit about some of the clients that you work with, um, uh, like who, who is a good client for Atomic Wash? And maybe you've got a success story or two you might want to share. Yeah. Yeah. Thank God we do have a few success stories. I'm sure you yeah, do. Yeah, if, it, we're happy. Yeah. We've been in business for about 12 years, right? So, so that's the, the GBS thing is new, which really enhances us, which is fantastic. Um, but what the, the deal is, is if once again, you go to our website. So, Advocate is a, is a great company here locally that we've done some really great rebranding with. Um, there's also some great insurance companies here. Um, Stratix is another great company. Um, and then we even get into the craft brew um, world, right? So, so that's a whole different thing if you think about it. You think about IBM, you think about GE, you think about some of our massive customers that we have out there, Boeing, Coca-Cola, Walmart, uh, First Data. But the craft brew folks have really come full forward. You need all the cans to look a certain way, right? There's somebody's idea that they want it to look a certain way. Then they have multiple different brands, but they all have to be consistent because it's marketing, right? That's they can't right. Be so one's black and white, one's green, one's bl- it's got to be a whole new message. And so we have a really great group uh, group up in um, in uh, Gainesville, Georgia, called um, LNB Left Nut Brewery, right? So Pap Data started. He was an HP executive, mm. really great guy. And so he went to the folks at Sweetwater, learned how to do the whole piece, and then he had his own idea how he wanted this whole thing to look. So we've got an executive running a craft brewery, right? So it's not your <laughs> typical millennial. For sure. So what he asked us to do is come in. We had a great program for all of his his promo stuff and what that needed to look like. So we were able to build a great fulfillment center for him at our, our warehouses through GPS to go ahead and fulfill those different pieces. So he doesn't have to pay for it until he orders his stuff, which is great for a craft brewery trying to make money, right? Rather be making kegs than selling t-shirts. Yep. And then on the other side, how do we make our cans look better, right? Because it's not bottles anymore. It's funny. We went back to cans. And how do we make the artwork consistent with the five to eight different brands I have and seasonal brands as well? Mm. So the artwork piece for that. And that's very personal. So um, LNB up in Gainesville, Georgia, great company, great people. Um, also he's, he's part of Kettering executive network that we talked about. Yeah. A little bit. The, yeah. That you're very active with. Yeah. And so, and there was some trust there, right? Cause remember we're building a brand new thing here with GBS and atomic wash based in Atlanta. It's a brand yeah. new venture for GBS, but atomic wash's name has been here for 12 years. Mm-hmm. So some great success stories with that. Wow. That's, that's fantastic. We're speaking with Frank Parisi and Frank is with atomic wash design, but you also have a, another passion, which is, uh, a terrific cause. Tell folks about that. Yeah. Miracle league. So yeah, that is something I've been involved in. Oddly enough, my daughter, my, my daughter. So I'm one of those families where everyone's involved in the special needs world. And so I'm a big out to tennis player and I loved it. So my daughters would come out, cheer me on. It was a lot of fun. Last, I called the last bastion of competition for old guys, right? Get on the tennis court. <laughs> and yeah, don't, don't strap on the, the helmet and the shoulder pads anymore. You got to play tennis. I, I'm laughing because I identify with that, yes, Frank, sir. but go ahead. Yes, sir. So, yeah. so my daughter never showed up anymore. And I said, where's Isabella? And he says, my, my wife's like, she's been volunteering as an announcer over at Miracle League. And so he said, you need to go check it out. So I stopped playing tennis or it was between seasons and I went to go look at it. And um, I really fell in love with it. The whole aspect is for anybody. I call it kids. I've been on the board now for about five years. And what we do is you know, kids, but I got a four-year-old to my youngest, up to a 65-year-old. So we obviously have an adult team. So anybody with special needs. We have a rubber field that we built. Um, we have four of them here in the state of Georgia. And what we do is you can have a wheelchair out there. It, it's so if somebody falls down, if you have mental issues, if you have physical issues, you have any issue at all. It could be autism. You name it. We'll take you. And it doesn't have to be from a particular spot in Georgia. If you're from St. Simons, you can play up in North Georgia. Or if you're from North Georgia, you can play in our Conyers field. It doesn't matter. Uh, we scholarship about 60% of our kids. 
Um, and we're just extremely fortunate because we have so many great donors here in the, uh, in the state of Georgia. Wow. That's, that's great work. So uh, tell, tell me what, um, what is it about baseball that, what does that bring to, uh, kids, adults with special needs that that's special that maybe other sports don't do quite as well. So, so a couple of things here in Georgia, right? So yeah. we're, we're nationwide, but yeah. here in Georgia, it's, it's, it's America's sport, right? It's one of those things. You got the Dallas Cowboys over there and, right. and then you got the Atlanta Braves for sure. So the Braves have been fantastic, um, and, and coming over and helping us out and, and, uh, Javi Lopez and, you know, some of the, some of the World Series team guys, they have a little bit more time than the current players. And, and we're trying to get some of the current players to come over because, wow, they're doing a great job for the Braves. Hmm. But the whole passion is all of those kids, they, they identify with baseball in some form or fashion because it's always on at the house. There's 160 some odd games going on a year. It's always there. And so when they are able to go out there and strap on, and what we do at Miracle League is we have buddies that come out. So Pinecrest will come out, different high schools, Alpharetta High School. Um, and it's really cool because the coaches now make it mandatory to have, um, before you get your varsity letter, to have a certain amount of community hours. So they come and volunteer every single week. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so it's really cool because the parents then sit in the stands. Mm-hmm. So we got free concessions. We got kids um, playing baseball out in the field with their buddies to make sure they're safe, able to get around the baseball field, or somebody might need to hit for them or whatever the cause might be. The parents are in the stands and run around, but also now they're mingling with all these great athletes, right? So you got the Atlanta Braves players. I just talked to a gentleman who used to play for uh, for Seattle. He's going to come out. And so September 7th is our opening day. And our our dear friends who do so many things for us politically, not just for Miracle League, but also for just the special needs community as a whole, they come out, right? So they come out and, and they, they throw the first pitch. They be part of the whole organization. It's funny. The Braves players don't like to throw the first pitch. They like the political people to do it. Yeah. That it's amazing. Uh, uh, folks like that uh, perform among, uh, in front of 30, 40, 50,000 people, but you know, throw out the first pitch at a, at a game that's off the radar screen, there's more pressure on that, right? And, and we ask for an hour of their time, and they end up staying for six hours. They're that's amazing. wonderful. Yeah, so we that's really wonderful. appreciate the community support, yeah. but it's a great organization, and we invite anybody to come out. Like I said, at Coal Mountain Park is going to be opening day for uh, September 7th for Miracle League. And give folks uh, – I'm going to get to um, where folks can find out more information about Atomic Wash, but I, I want to make sure people know where they can get more information on Miracle League. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. thank you for that. And that's one thing we're trying to bring um, just so people know about it. So it's, it's Miracle League, and it's cfc.org, cfc.org, Miracle League, cfc.org. And um, you can get any information. You can find out who I am, but also feel free to contact me. Um, my email address is, is my name, fxparisi, P-E-R-I-S-S-I, at gmail.com. And I'll be glad. I, I head up all the promotions and all that. If anybody wants to just be part of it, volunteer, um, donate, whatever you could think of, or just be there for the day, we'd love to have you come out, be part of that organization. That's great work, uh, Frank. Congratulations on that. Thank you for what you're doing there. Uh, and for those that would like more information on Atomic Wash, tell them how they can uh, get more information on your company. Yeah, thanks. Um, the Atomic Wash w- website is atomicwash.com, plain and simple, and that's the cool factor piece. And, and my telephone number, I, I travel quite often, so my number is 404-953-2513, and you'll find that on the website as well. Outstanding. Frank Parisi, uh, he's with Atomic Wash Design, also does great work with Miracle League. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much, John. My pleasure. So, folks, if you need help curing the headaches of administrative tasks, bookkeeping, marketing, presentations, uh, if you need help with uh, your workshop planning, go engage a smart and reliable office angel. They're not a temp agency or a placement firm. No, Office Angels matches your business support needs with angels who have the talent and experience necessary to help you maintain and grow your business on an ongoing or as-needed basis. Your terms, your timeline. They lend a hand when needed and fly off when the job is finished. Find out more at officeangels.us or call Chief Executive Angel SES Cabido at 770-442-9246. And folks, just a reminder that if you miss any of our shows uh, when we broadcast them live, you can find them on your favorite podcast app, whether that's Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, 
Um, check us out there, or you can go online at NorthFultonBusinessRadio.com. Uh, check us out on social media. We're on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, North Fulton Business Radio X. Uh, you can search for that term or just go to North Fulton BRX. So for our guest, Dr. Quinn Doe with Advancing Your Reach, uh, dot com and for Frank Parisi, Atomic Wash Design, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio. Today, you're connected more than ever. Your friends, your family, your life. And banking is what you do on your time, anywhere you like. Renaissance understands how you bank, offering mobile banking services you need. At Renaissance, we also understand that sometimes you need to speak to real people with real answers. That's why Renaissance has more than 170 convenient locations throughout the South ready to serve you. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Member FDIC.